Hey. How are you, bro? You good? You can see me. Not yet. Ah. Uh, oh, here it is. Hey. Uh, hang on. Yeah. Oh, Hi, bro. Hey. So it's a bit messed at the moment. That's all right. Oh, Andre, your mum. How's things? Um, all good, thanks. All right. What well, yeah. we're gonna do? Because this uh, is unedited stuff. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna introduce you because I don't mind doing this because it's all it is all raw bloopers, whatever. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> it's all good. So what okay. I'm gonna do is introduce you now. My name's my name's Phil Carew, and this is the Phil Carew Show. I am having the honour. In being able to introduce you to Emma Alexander, the one and only Filipino martial artist in the UK, uh, in in London, and boy, do you you're gonna have in for a treat because this is this is gonna be raw. This is just gonna be martial arts. We're gonna I'm gonna throw in some questions here. Uh, we weren't sure um, about how we were going to go about this because I didn't even realise that you and I were actually uh, from the same city, Cebu. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Yes, <laughs> Cebu, Philippines, uh, probably like 15 minutes away from each other from where I was born, you know. Oh, wow, man. I can't, I can't believe it. Yeah. So what I wanted to ask you, how did you get into... Um, Philippine martial arts and what age did you start at? Yeah, by accident, to be honest with you. Um, there was a friend of mine who introduced me into the uh, Filipino martial art when I was um, the age of 21. And the time yeah. that I was uh, I was aware of it, I was in the um, Philippines, of all yeah. places. I never knew there was such a thing as Filipino martial arts. And I've been studying um, other systems like karate when I was 14 and then later studying kung fu. And then it wasn't until my best friend told me that there was uh, an art called the Screamer. And after that, I kind of did my research and found out it was in my um, same village uh, where the Grandmasters were uh, training. So it kind of got hooked. When I learned this was from Cebu as well. So it was like, yeah. you know, <laughs> it was like 1999, I think I started training. And 1998, when I heard of it, when my friend went to the Philippines. I stayed in Philippines for one year after uni. I did a gap year. God. You know, I'd just like to let the audience know, it's like one of my passions is the Philippine martial arts. Now, it's very different because a lot of people, you know, how would you say, do you find it quite amusing? Sometimes when you hear someone say martial arts, you always hear karate. Yeah, the so, typical you know, common like, like karate, kung fu, you know, with the Bruce Lee, you know, and they misperceive that they don't realise that there's more than one martial arts. You can't just label it as just that because there is so many different different combinations of martial arts out there. Um, one, of the, one of the great things that I remember is on a Bruce Lee film, I didn't realise that Dan in the Santo was using the screamer sticks in one of the films. And yeah. that's what got me into it as well when I was younger. I thought, what is that? That's different, you know. When in one of his films, you know, when he he breaks the stick and then he turns yeah. it into a screamer stick, doesn't he? The, the yeah. style. So what about what about the, uh, the the competitive side of you? How did you get involved in that when you were when you were learning? What got you into wanting to compete? Um, I think where I was uh, training with a group before. I was a very competitive um, kind of person when I was young. So when I did karate, I always want to compete with the best. I've always had the mentality yes. to, be, to be the best, you have to fight the best, you know, or yes. be good. You have to go and mix with the good guys yes. who change the art and who have tested it. So I've always had it in my uh, young age when I did, um, when I first did Tang Soo I did the British Championship and um, I was I was British champion uh, back then, 1994. So it kind of sort of like came part of me. And the more I did the scream, I was, the more it pushed me that I really have to be good at this. Because yes. it's in my blood and it's my culture. 
And what more fitting to be uh, a Filipino who's not very good at his own art. So, <laughs> for me, you know? that's, and it was a hardly any Filipinos doing the art. That's the funny thing, especially in the UK. I was probably, maybe there's one or two, I was the, one of the main ones, but not many Filipino uh, from the Philippines or even that was born here were doing the Filipino art, which is crazy. Because it was here in the UK, what, 1980, from what I heard, yes. with um, one of Danny Santos' student, Bob Breen. Yes. But I've never heard of it. I've, I've, and I was into martial arts, you know. It was, it was there, but I think it wasn't, it was hidden. It wasn't introduced as it was a Filipino martial art, if you know what I mean. Yes. Including Bruce Lee had it, had sticks in the, one of his movies. Yes. But everyone thought it was Kung Fu, you know. Yeah. This is yeah, it. So it's, always been there. it's always been there in the background, but people never knew what the art was. I never knew, and I was growing up in the UK until a best friend of mine really told me about it. So in terms of the the Philippine martial arts, because I know there's so many different grandmasters uh, and there's different different areas of it, just like you know of the kung fu, you know, because there's different things, isn't there? You know, like the Wing Chun. And you know, with karate, you've yes. got like Wadaru, uh, Kaikushin, and then with the Filipino martial arts, Dosu Perez. Um, I didn't realize in Cebu, you know, I I was growing up there, and even when I go past, I keep seeing these insignias, you know, with the with the uh, the, the actual Dosu Perez. I thought, what's this, Mum? Dosu Perez, what's this? This looks <laughs> good. You know, I thought, oh, I've got to get in the action of this. This is like my heritage, you know, back. You know, as a Cebuano, you know, you're back there and you think this is in Cebu and it's on our front doorstep. And I didn't even know what it was. Yeah, exactly. That's why I, how I felt when I was on holiday. You know, one of my friends who was English, he was into Muay Thai and everything. He knew about it before I did because he did JKD. And I think they covered it in Jit Kune Do. Yes. Uh, again, it was Dina Santo Blend when I first started, which I did Jit, Jit Kune Do as well, I think for a couple of years. Yes. And so I found out that the screamer, was really its own particular art. Yes. And it was complete. So, yeah, the same thing. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different styles in, in the Screamer. I mean, Dose of is one, one of the, one of many hundreds of styles. Yes. The same karate. It's, you know, and there's a lot of similar, similarities. There's different islands you go to, they have their own style. But everything has formulated in sticks. Or yes. it's the blended weapon and the machete or a short sword, you know? So what would you say in terms of this audience out there with the Philippine martial arts, because our origin of it, the FMA, this screamer from the Philippines, I've noticed this as well of doing my homework and, and seeing other different footages. They don't, it, it looks very, very brutal, you know, when it comes to the actual sticks, because they, they can actually, if you, if you're actually doing it, they can actually break bones, you know, the rattan sticks. Yes, they are. Uh, they're brutal. I mean, it's quite. They're very dangerous to the wrong hand. Uh, yes. A stick, stick fighter. It's been recorded that one of those rat hand stick. I mean, they're pretty soft. Can crack a coconut shell. So imagine that thing whacking your skull at what? I think they're going to. They're going to about fifty to sixty miles per hour. And top the screamer doors, they can strike like I think. From what I heard, one grandmaster can strike 14 strike in like in less than two seconds. That's My. how quick the strikes is. And that's a blunt instrument. Imagine that's a machete. It's very, Ooh. very hard to block. It's My a very goodness. dangerous, dangerous art, to be honest with you. And it what still is you... in a way. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, what would yeah. you what do you what did you feel like when you actually the first time when you had your your first competition with the screamer sticks. What what did it feel like? You know when you when you actually got hit, and then you're actually like, oh, this is this is raw, this is real. You know, if I didn't wear all this padding, how much more do you think it would have been like? You know, if you got struck yeah. by that. It was uh, nerve wracking and scary at the same time because you got these guys are bashing the hell out of you, and you just fortunately you got a gear on, and it's still you can still feel it. But you know, obviously they're there for safety. But when you start imagining this thing. I'm going so fast and so quick. There's, there's no way you're going to be left if mm. there's no headgear or anything or gloves. Mm. It just literally will destroy you, you know? <laughs> uh, and there's no way you can do it without it either. 
yeah. For sports, yeah, for sports, you need this gear for safety because these uh, strikes are brutal and deadly. You know, you hit one of these things in someone's head or strike someone's hand, it's yeah. gonna break. There's no doubt about it with uh, a trained person. You know, what would you say in terms of this is going to be changing the subject, but I thought I'd thrown it in the mix. It's a bit of fun, guys. We're not just going to be talking about martial arts. I'm going to ask Alex here. What superpower would you have? You can have more than one. What would you have and why? And you can use martial arts with it as well. <laughs> I don't know. I think I've got a lot of Superman. He's one of my um, yeah? heroes. I would say fly. Yeah. I love flying. Yeah. 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 Fly with sticks, I'll be wicked, and laser beam. But I would always have a swimming <laughs> stick in my hand. <laughs> fly with a stick in your hand with laser yeah. beams. <laughs> yeah. If I could fly with my swimmer sticks, <laughs> uh, that's it. That's for me. But I, I can see this image of you now going da, 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 yeah. with some sticks on the back or wherever you've yeah. got <laughs> That'd be my superpower fly and have super sticks. And oh, that's it. <laughs> One of the other things as well, where would you like? Just to let the audience know, because obviously this is this is unedited, this is raw, this is great, this is having a bit of fun as well as just you know getting to see uh, to know the the Alex, you know, because as well as Alex being the instructor, what about your stunts and acting? How was that when you first started doing that? Was it great, you know, because when you go in and you see all these things in the films and you actually go in there and you think, oh, this is amazing, it's my turn now, I can actually go out there and be creative and have a bit of uh, a bit of an not just an identity you know for for who you are but you can add a little bit of a, a t you can tweak the character you know with your own your your own ideas you know how was that when you were doing that oh it was, it was good it was yeah. good to have that opportunity to be honest and representing the filipino community and representing the filipino martial art and the the people that are studying iskrima so it's nice to represent that and it was nice to be able to give in this opportunity from people that came to my gym and told me, why don't you try uh, get into uh, the acting or the stunt, in, stunt world? And from there, I kind of I kind of sort of like, you know what, why not? Because I always loved movies since I was a kid. I mean, I love Jackie Chan. Um, funny as hell, you know, and there's all these stunts, it's just crazy. So that's how I got involved, really, from teaching actors and stunts. So it kind of grew from there. Then I started choreographing... Um, fight scenes for little short videos or music videos and the fight choreography kind of reminds me of um competing in forms yes it has similarities but obviously it's just more combat yeah and make it look good for the screen and make it look good for the camera so that's the bit where i have to learn uh, how to make the fighting technique look good on camera and look good on yeah. action yeah and then obviously fit it within the character of the actor so yeah, so the acting, I love the acting side. Uh, I'm doing a lot of it now. And I think that's my ultimate goal now. At the same time, also have the, have the gym as the martial art, uh, Filipino martial art uh, hub. But yeah, the gym's growing into the film industry. I think that's where where it's going to go. Yeah, I, I, look, I look forward to doing some more work with you, actually, because, um, you know, in, in the process, guys, uh, I don't know if you know this, I have spoken to behind the scenes, even... Uh, not with, during this interview, but even out, outside of, of this, uh, I have spoken to, to Alex about this and I'd like to do something with him. So look out for this, guys, and look out for Alex and some other films because when I, when I finish this, uh, I will actually add some information on my page just to let you know what he's been doing, if there's any current events. Oh, yeah, while, while we're talking, just to remind me, what have you got at the moment? Have you got any current events that you're actually doing? Hang on, sorry. That's cool. I had to uh, quickly. I completely forgot to put to put something on. Um. <laughs> sorry, I turned off the video because I should have put this t-shirt on. Yay! <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't be wearing a pink Adidas. I should That's be all right. Do you know oh, what? Yeah. I was going to actually ask you this. <laughs> Your apparel, I'd like to get one of those. Got, uh, those oh, yeah, the you back can get that on I can send you a link. So I thought I'd wear this one. So yeah, this is my club. Oh, so yeah, like uh, back to your question. Um, well, as you know, I've been doing quite a few, lot, a lot of stunts lately. So I've, I was um, on 
the Marvels uh, recently, filmed last uh, late last year. Uh, come off that and went straight into Willow TV series. Yes. I did a double for that one, a stunt double of one of the main actors. That was an amazing job. That was the best job I did because we did that in, um, Cam- I think, Cambasan in Wales somewhere. Yeah. But I can't say too much who I was doubling. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, that's out. fair enough. <clears throat> you, you'll know who I am, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I did that for a while. Then I did, um, next one, I did a stunt for Heart of Stone, Gal Gadot. So there was Ooh. a stunt performer for that one. That was my recent one. And then obviously and now I've been uh, auditioning for other things as well. There's so many jobs around. So... Hopefully, in a couple of weeks, I'll be on a big job. But yeah, and I was on an acting job as well early this year on the new Take That movie. So I was proud of that because that was my very first um, acting gig as a professional. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm yeah, proud of you, bro. I'm, I'm proud of what you have achieved, you know, because it's a gradual thing. I think sometimes it's good. What would you say to anybody out there when they're not sure? Because what, is your, what would you say to someone that's out there that's quite unsure and they're stuck and they want to try something out like this what big piece of advice would you give them because you know because sometimes people say well they don't know who to go to who to ask when to start because obviously it's a, it's more of a journey isn't it you know rather than just think oh i'm gonna i'm gonna get an agent i'm gonna get someone i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that and then bang it's just gonna happen it doesn't necessarily happen like that obviously you've had to go through certain things to get to where you are you know and to be able to get that you know you 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 get all your credits as well you know and I've noticed that you know I've been following you for a long time even before you were acting and you know and and this is the funny thing about it we folks we are fellow mothers uh, we're fellow get see this is unedited we are fellow brothers from another mother we didn't know that you know and this is the thing, you know, I, when I got in contact uh, with you, Alex, it was quite funny really. Cause when we first, first spoke, there was quite a lot of similarities in what we were saying, you know, Filipino, Cebuano, we're in Cebu and you knew where we were, Pardo, you know, just to mention that and family down there. Cause I've got, um, I've got my, my grandfather, um, there's a um, Sabiliano and there's Sabiliano street. And I didn't even know I had relatives down the bottom there. And oh, wow. we know you and I could be could be relatives and we, we might not even know it. <laughs> Probably not, <laughs> I yeah. Know. I mean, the street that you're mentioning, um, I really know really well because I I visited there and I I have an auntie that lives there and that works also for the church. And funny thing is, when I was like 18, I was there for like almost two and a half months working on the main street of Pardo because my uncle uh, sells peanuts. Uh, there you go. For the for the um, when there's a festival, yes. so I sometimes help with him, or I helped him selling peanuts, the cooked peanuts, the fried one, yeah. the uh, boiled one. So I used Ooh. to help him on the stand. So Pardo, I really know really well because I've been in and out of that area. Then my favorite, actually, for we know, for 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 <laughs> I know, I might have actually been there and I bought some off you, and I, we didn't even know it. We didn't even know exactly. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you might have done because uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's right on the main street. Oh. Oh, that's amazing. You know, um, we're just putting putting it out there in Taboo. You know, um, the other thing is as well, what I wanted to ask you is what place apart from the, of our apart from our homeland, Philippines, motherland, uh, where would you go uh, in terms of travel uh, and why would you like to go there if you haven't been there yet? I would say... Probably the US, the LA. Yeah. I'd like to break the uh, the film industry there. I'm yeah. coming close to it. But yeah, US is what I'd like to go to. I mean, yeah. I, I was in Florida when I was just competing in 2006 as a stick fighter. Yeah. But I was there only for the competition. But I never really saw anything else because I was really concentrated on yeah. the channel. But yeah, I'd love to go to an America, um, uh, to US to break the filming scene, really. And that's mainly my goal is to go to Hollywood. I mean, not my ultimate goal. Um, obviously, that's that was, that's, that's yeah. the ultimate uh, film uh, that someone that wants to do is break the Hollywood scene, you know? So maybe one day I'd love to do that. I mean, it's not my priority, but, you know, you never know. If you work hard, I might make it. So, yeah. No, I'm sure you will do, bro. I'm proud of you. I, the other thing is we've got links um 
Alex and I, we've got links as Cebuanos, as, as Filipino, uh, Filipinos. I don't know if you was aware of this, but Bruno Mars, as no, uh, Peter Hernandez as Bruno Mars, his mother was actually is is actually from there as well because she went to, she went to visit and there was a dance, you know, with all the prisoners wearing all their orange uniforms. And I hear that that's famous in Cebu City, yeah. That's it. So you know yourself as a, a fellow fellow Cebuano, you know, you're making it there in the film thing. So you're already do you're already doing something, bro. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm getting it slowly. I mean, there's also other fellow Filipinos made it in Hollywood already. I mean, Botesta is half Philly. Uh, also, the girl in um, Picard, yes. uh, the lady that, that leads it, her, her dad is a West End musical um, actor for the Miss Saigon. So there's already there a go. lot of Philly uh, actors already, um, you know, setting them up. And the guy who did... Um, what is it? The, the Canadian Filipino guy. He was in the last action movie that was on Netflix with yes. uh, Ray, Ray Reynolds. He uh, was acting as a bad guy. Yes. He's from the Philippines, or yeah, but he's Canadian Philippines, you know? Wow. Yeah. Yo, we're, we're proud we're, of them. To be honest, I'd, like, I'd like to be <laughs> where they are. I'm kind of, sort of amazed at you know, what they've achieved. So I'm like, wow. Let's, let's we're see everywhere, bro. Filipino. I can go in. <laughs> now, I haven't, there's no British Filipino yet. <laughs> so I'm uh, hoping to be the first one. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind, you know, whoever. I'm sure there probably is, but I just don't know who. I don't think there is one, anyway. Mm, I don't think not that, what I'm aware of. <laughs> yeah, not aware of. That's British really been made it made it big in filming yet. So oh, you may yeah. be one of the first of many, bro. Yeah, let's see, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that that would be like the the goal kind of thing. Not the goal, but it'll be a nice achievement, you know, yeah. to set the mark for the. For the uh, for the community, yeah, yeah. that's true. One yeah. other thing as well, because I, I know I have sent you some, uh, I have sent you some information. But what I would like to ask you, this is one thing that my son would probably be surprised of. I would like to ask actually, have you tried balut, and what do you think of it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have tried balut. I I love it. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Yeah, it's a bit freaky because of what it's made of. Mixed uh, views, bro. <laughs> mixed views. Yeah, yeah, a few uh, people go, what is that? Like, oh, yeah. When they see it, they look online yeah. and they check it. <laughs> yeah. It's not a chicken. It's a duck, you know? Yeah. It's a duck egg, yeah. It's a duck egg. Um, yeah, I mean, it's very tasty. Uh, it's very aphrodisiac as well. So mm. for single men out there, <laughs> take one in the evening. <laughs> So what do you what do you think in terms of that, as well as a cuisine, for trying that for the balut? What do you I think? think mm. What do you think in terms of? Because I know that it's like a wasn't it like a, a saying or a myth that they were saying that you had to eat it in the dark because you couldn't see what it was eat what you were eating or something like that. Sometimes yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's normally served in the evening. <laughs> in Philippines, it's always in the evening when everyone's like. Uh, mainly drunk or after the karaoke everyone have a balot because i remember when i was there for holiday for one year all we're eating was balot in the evening around midnight time where it's fresh and it's warm you have it with a uh, salt and yeah. a coconut vinegar with chili and a uh, hint on it yeah it tastes so good when you're drunk you know Ooh. especially after <laughs> karaoke <laughs> oh yeah that's amazing. another thing we are well known not just for um the the food but the karaoke, are you a karaoke man? That's what I'd like to ask you. I used to love karaoke. I do have my own karaoke machine. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not, tr uh, you're, you're a true Filipino because you've got a karaoke yeah. machine. <laughs> I have karaoke, but I'm the worst Filipino singer in the world. Oh, no. Yeah. They'll show you all right. Yeah, but I, got, I do have a karaoke machine, actually. Back in the day. <laughs> I still have it now. <laughs> <sighs> Do you know what? It I mean, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be right if you didn't have one, bro. Because like you know, as a Filipino, you have have, have karaoke machine. Hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, good. What's the okay? What is, the other question is? What's the funniest thing that you've ever done in terms of one you're doing, not just martial arts, but a stunt? Have you had any sort of funny experiences on there? Because obviously there'll be like bloopers. What's the funniest experience you've had? 
Is it like you've forgotten to have a stick or you're doing something? Because I know you did something once. You were doing that and then you were like, where's the stick gone? <laughs> you were doing yeah, it so no. fast. You didn't even know where the stick was. You were like... Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I've done a few a few bloopers uh, in the past. But, yeah, anything I can recall where I can sort of like remember, it's probably Willow, where I had to do a battle rope kind of scene. It was like literally for 12 hours, I had to pretend that I'm riding a horse kind of thing, but I'm not. <laughs> with a rope. You need to ride and a horse and there's nothing and there. there's nothing there. <laughs> they were pulling me with, with this, uh, can't say too much, pulling me in and I yeah. had to like pretend. Yeah, uh, yeah that was, that was uh, an experience. Ooh, and sleeping yeah. on set as well. Uh, yeah, the last job that I had, I was a dead body for two for like two, two weeks, longest dead body ever. And <laughs> when you're a dead body, you just have to be there because you're in shock. Yeah. And I think I fell asleep one time. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that must have been one of the best jobs you had. He's like, just just sleep, don't worry. <laughs> just yeah, sleep. just we'll wake you up when it's well. That was really bad. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, but I've seen well, a lot of stunt, stunt guys do that do that where they're dead body for a long time and they just end up sleeping. Because, you know, it's a, hard, it's a hard job. God, yeah, especially if you're doing something like that and then you have to pretend and you think, well, it's tiring. You know, it's they don't think it takes a lot of energy up, but it does, you know, if you're it doing does, that. It does, yeah. 100%. Right, okay. Bro, do you mind if I go quickly to the toilet? Sorry, I'm just like... Yeah, go, 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 go. Hold, I hold just pause it or something else, yeah? Yeah, I'll pause it. Hold on a moment. Sorry, go. bro.